Oh, well, hello. My name's Anthony Rowland. Uh, I'm the sales manager here at Henry Pool & Co. on Savile Row. Henry Pool uh, are, are the founders of Savile Row. Uh, we were the very first company to actually open our doors back in 1846, uh, actually on the other side of the road. Um, and we were there until 1961, when we had to sadly move uh, off the road for about 20 years. Uh, and then we moved back here uh, in 1982. Up until that point, before um, Henry Poole had actually opened uh, the doors on Savile Row, uh, it had been primarily a road for doctors. Um, yeah, and in fact, if you look, you can see some blue plaques along the, along the walls for physicians uh, from years gone by. They weren't so happy about trade moving in, so they all up sticks and moved down to Harley Street. Um, and then as they moved, more tailoring firms and cloth merchants moved in. So it's really all our fault. <laughs> <laughs> that was really the start of it. Uh, what had happened is James Poole had died. Uh, he'd set up the business in 1806. And uh, it was really because of Henry and the fact that James had done so well. Henry had gone to some very good schools, moved in the right social circles. Uh, and he really was the person that turned the company into the preeminent tailoring firm, uh, not only of the uh, 19th century, but obviously the, the 20th as well, really. We are still purely a bespoke tailoring firm. We don't do made to measure and we don't do an off the peg suit like some people. Um, we are just purely bespoke. And everything is done downstairs in our basement. Uh, we have about 30 tailors uh, working for us. Um, I think we're probably one of the largest, if not the largest, in terms of an actual tailoring firm. And a lot of the tailors that we have have been with us for a good many years. Uh, and we're very proud of the fact that we also have encouraged and certainly uh, championed um, young apprentices to come through as well to learn the trade and the business. Whether you become a tailor or a cutter, uh, you will probably have between three to five years apprenticeship uh, and then it obviously like everyone it's a constant learning process throughout life but um, primarily it's, it's usually three to five years depending on their aptitude uh, or whether they've gone to college or not. They'll be very proud of the fact and we have a number of master tailors who have um, graciously given of their time to the younger apprentices uh, and we've been very fortunate with some of the people we've actually had through the doors two of whom have actually won the Golden Shears Award, which is held every other year, which is considered to be the sort of Oscars of the tailoring world. But one of the things that um, we have championed also is the fact that we've actually taken business to other countries. Uh, so what we tend to do is we do something called a trunk show, hence the trunk, um, and we go to various hotels in various cities, either in America, uh, France, Luxembourg. We do Japan, we do go to China as well where we have three to four shops under license there now. Uh, but we're finding that we're getting a lot more Chinese people coming here yeah, now, true. which is very good. Uh, and also Germany. Uh, so we cover Europe fairly well. America is probably 40% of our business. Uh, but yes, we are certainly still championing it and in fact we're very fortunate in the sense that we were given the Queen's Award for Enterprise uh, last year for international trade. Um, so it, it's something that we've been continually doing uh, and will continue to do so. We, you have an appointment. Fine. So welcome. Uh, we'll, we would meet here. It would either be myself or um, Simon Cundy, who is the seventh generation uh, family owner. Uh, and then we would show you some of the fabrics from, uh, over there. Mm -hmm. We have about four to 6,000 to look through. So we'd probably ask you lots of questions and try and narrow it down as to what you're looking for. Most people want either a gray or a blue suit. Uh, it's going to be probably for business. If it's not for business, it's probably going to be for a special occasion. Uh, it could be uh, an evening suit or a tuxedo, something we invented. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that in a, in a minute. Um, so it, it really depends. So what we do is we ask a lot of questions and narrow it down. But you want to also make it as relaxed and as comfortable for them. Uh, because at the end of the day, they're putting a lot of trust in you 
uh, and what we do um, because some people haven't tried it before. Um, it could be their first, very first time for a bespoke suit. So it's, it's building up a, a relationship and a rapport with them uh, and not just uh, with us with them but them with us and, and hoping that they like what we do. Um, so that's really the, the whole process. Obviously we then take the measurements uh, with the cutters in the fitting rooms. Uh, they will then cut out an individual pattern on brown paper, classic brown paper. Uh, they will get the cloth in uh, and we will then cut out the cloth uh, and they will then bundle it up with all the uh, pieces that need to go into that particular jacket, trouser or vest and we will then pass it down to the various tailors downstairs to, to make up. The, the one at the end, the red one, is a semi-state livery that we originally made in 1875 uh, and was in constant, or should we say regular use, uh, pretty much up until about six or seven years ago when it was replaced by something that we again made in exactly the same manner in terms of Victorian tailoring uh, and how it was all uh, done and the whole process was done. So hopefully that should last another 130 years, fingers crossed. The one next to it with all the lovely gold on it, which goes all the way down the, the back with the gold thread and the gold brocade, uh, is a diplomatic corps and privy council coat that we used to make between 1846 and 1947, when they decided, either for austerity measures uh, or the fact that it was just too jolly heavy, um, that they would sort of go to a normal, regular suit. Uh, we did recently quote somebody uh, who was interested in having another one made. Um, I think it was a few weeks ago when the goal was at its sort of highest point, and we quoted them at about 32,000 for it. And the lovely green one here is actually a coachman's livery that we made for the Earl of Rosebery, who was one of Queen Victoria's Prime Ministers back in 1893. Uh, he was a member of the Order of the Thistle, which is like the second highest heraldic order in the United Kingdom, uh, so hence the green. Uh, before he became the Earl, his surname was Primrose, so the Primrose yellow of the waistcoat. And although you can't see it so well now, on the lacework at the front here, uh, and the narrow sort of strip going down the middle of it, it used to be a rose pink. Um, so I should think it was probably quite a sight. This one here, with the sword, um, is a court dress. Now, back in Queen Victoria's uh, reign, um, she held a competition to redesign the court dress that people had to wear, who weren't in the military or weren't a diplomat, had to wear when they went to uh, one of the royal palaces. And this was the old style that um, they used to have. And Henry Poole actually won the competition uh, to redesign it. And he actually redesigned it so that it was a little bit more of a square, uh, almost like a sort of white tie uh, jacket is today. Um, so it was a little bit squarer. A lot of designers uh, will look at the history books and they'll go, oh, I kind of like that. And they'll then maybe do something and, and, and rejig it slightly for their own particular way. And then everyone thinks, oh, wow, look, so-and-so's done this. It's amazing. Well, actually, it was done, you know, several years beforehand. We did actually invent the evening suit, stroke tuxedo, uh, partly due to the Prince of Wales, who later became Edward VII. He uh, bought Sandringham and wanted something a little bit more informal for dinners there, uh, rather than the typical white tie and tails that Queen Victoria was very, you know, very keen on and, and almost demanded that everyone should wear. So he came to see Henry Poole, Henry Poole probably went to see him, I should say, and uh, it transpired that what we did was we cut the tails off. And in the process, we ended up making a midnight blue silk smoking jacket style, but with trousers, which sort of morphed into what you would now deem an evening suit. The majority of our customers tend to be CEOs, uh, entrepreneurs, owners of their own business, lawyers, doctors. Um, but, you know, we do, obviously, especially with a lot of the Americans, which they're very good at, is actually um, introduce, and a lot of how we sort of get new customers is usually by introduction. We don't really advertise as such. Uh, it's very much sort of word of mouth uh, and grandfather or father saying, let me take you to my tailors, whether it be sort of mid 
to late 30s and onwards. That's, that's usually where most customers will probably um, start to come from because they're getting into a more settled life. This would, or should, with a customer who has a good number of suits in rotation. Uh, and we would normally advise five to six suits at least, so they give them a chance to rest. We would expect this to last somewhere between five and ten years. But what you're paying for is the years of knowledge that go into it, the fact that it's all hand done, uh, and the fact that it's going to last.